Hi everyone! Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm Tammy. Some of you play Roblox, right? I used to be really into it. I would play every moment I could, even between classes. After getting home from school, I'd quickly do my homework and then play for hours. Whenever my parents would see me playing, they'd say, that's enough, go do something else for a while. I'd stop playing and watch Roblox videos on YouTube instead. <laughs> As you might have guessed, I was spending a large part of my allowance on Roblox. The Roblox currency is called Robux. I was so hooked on it that even when I was buying something in real life, I would convert the price into Robux. For example, when the ice cream guy would say it's $2.50 for a scoop, I'd go, that's 200 Robux. <laughs> I wasn't the only Roblox addict in our house. My little sister Ellie was really into it too, but her parents never said anything to her. Sometimes my mom would even sit next to her and watch her play. Once when my mom asked me to get off Roblox, I said, Ellie is playing the whole time too. How come you don't say anything to her? And my mom replied, she's too young. And when I said, Ellie is only three years younger than me, my mom got angry and said, Tammy, stop comparing yourself to your sister or I won't let you play at all. <laughs> it might seem weird to you that our parents treat us differently, but I'm used to it. Ellie is their favorite. For example, last year for her birthday, they gave her 10,000 Robux. I couldn't believe my ears when I heard it. My mom's a housewife and my dad works at an Amazon warehouse. They always complain about money, but when it comes to my sister, they act as if they're loaded. I remember blurting out, that's not fair, you got me a t-shirt for my birthday. Ellie, being the brat that she is, couldn't stop herself from <laughs> laughing at me, saying, what's the one thing in Roblox you really want but can't afford? I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> Before I continue, let me just remind you to hit the like button so you're enjoying this video. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Thanks so much. <laughs> one night, as I was watching Roblox videos on YouTube, <gasps> when the power went out, I lit a candle. There's a huge tree in front of our house. The branches were making shadows on the wall, which looked scary. As if that weren't enough, an owl began hooting and it felt really eerie in there. As I was sitting there, shaking with fear, I had a fantastic idea. I used to think it would be so great to have my own Roblox YouTube channel. But YouTube has thousands of them. Most of them have similar content. There would be no point in having a channel like that. That night, I had a brilliant idea. I could make my channel stand out by making scary Roblox videos. Later that night, I found a Halloween makeup tutorial on YouTube and drew a scary skull on my face. Then I turned off the lights and lit a candle. Finally, I began playing the scariest Roblox game, Mimic. I actually felt scared and so the video came out really realistic. I created a new YouTube channel and uploaded the video. That moment, I became a YouTuber. Naturally, I did not get a lot of views at first. Only my friends were watching, but I kept dropping videos on a regular basis. I was putting on different scary makeup every night and playing a scary Roblox game. Since it was always late and I didn't want to wake up my family, I couldn't scream. So I invented something called a silent scream. Whenever I was scared in the game, I would pretend to scream by opening my mouth really wide. People loved this. In the comments, they would count my silent screams. Since my family didn't like my playing Roblox, I couldn't tell them about my channel. I had to keep it a secret. In fact, I wanted to tell them because I was starting to make money from it. I was gradually making more and more. After I hit 200,000 subscribers, I started making as much in one day as my dad made in a month. But I didn't have a bank account because I wasn't old enough. So YouTube was holding on to the money I made. I was going to get it all when I had a bank account. Everything was going great, and then I got caught. The silent scream had become really popular at Ellie's school. Since all her friends were talking about it, Ellie got curious and checked out the channel herself. Even though I was wearing a lot of makeup, she recognized my voice. She got super jealous when she saw how many subscribers I had. She ran home from school and told my mom about it. My parents and I had a big fight that night. My mom said, how can you do something like this without telling us? You will shut down that channel immediately. To which I replied, <laughs> Mom, I love doing videos. Please let me do this. I'm making money too. My dad said, Tammy, I already have a job. We don't need the five bucks you're making on YouTube, which made <laughs> me laugh because I was making thousands of dollars every month. My dad got really <laughs> upset that I was laughing at him. You are going to your room and deleting that channel now. I don't want to hear another word from you about this. He yelled. I went to my room without saying a word. I couldn't fall asleep for a long time. It wasn't fair for them to make me delete my channel, and it was ridiculous. I realized what the real reason was. My parents were actually jealous of my success. Specifically, they didn't want me to be more successful than Allie. This thought made me really angry. There was no way I was deleting my channel now. Suddenly, I had an idea. 
My parents had always wanted to own a house, but couldn't afford to buy one. If I could buy them a house with the money I'd made, they'd realize this was serious. I went ahead with my plan the next day. I knew my grandma had a bank account, so I went to visit her, (laughs) and I told her everything. She hugged me and said, you're such a smart girl, I'm proud of you, and agreed to help me. The next day, I got YouTube to release the money into my grandma's bank account. A week later, I found the perfect house with help from a real estate agent. I signed the papers and got the keys. I still had some money left. I wanted to decorate our new home so we'd be able to move into it with all new furniture. I worked hard on that over the next few days. I turned it into a dream house. Finally, everything was ready. I was so looking forward to showing it to my parents. I had no new videos up on the channel for some time now. After everyone was asleep, I put on some scary makeup and did another video. I uploaded the video and got into bed. I was so excited, and I was also curious about my family's reaction. The next day, I went over to the new house. My mom called me three times, but I didn't pick up. I was waiting for my dad to get off work. After I made sure that he was home, I sent the location of the house to him and wrote, Dad, will all of you please come to this address? I've got a surprise for you. My dad texted me, Tammy, where are you? Come home now. You have to talk about this YouTube business of yours. I wrote back, Dad, come to this address I just sent you. Let's talk here. My dad didn't respond. When she saw the new video, Ellie must have figured out that I didn't delete my channel and ratted me out to my parents. I didn't think too much of it because I was sure they'd change their minds once they found out I'd bought them a magnificent house. I waited outside. Were they going to come? Thankfully, in half an hour, my mom, my dad, and Ellie arrived. My sister had a smirk on her face. Both my parents looked really furious. My mom asked, Tammy, why did you bring us to this place? I said, Mom, I have a surprise for you. She wasn't listening. Why didn't you delete your YouTube channel? Did you think we wouldn't find out? She yelled. Without saying a word, I held up the gift box I was holding. My dad said, Tammy, you have disappointed us. Are you going to bribe us with a gift? And I said to him, yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. Mom, would you please open it? My mom opened the box. She was surprised to see the key inside. What's this key for? She asked. That's for the door to our new house, I said. Then I pointed to the house right behind me. It said on the door, welcome to your new home. All three of them stared at the house. My dad asked, Tammy, how did you buy this house? And I said to him, I bought it with the money I made on YouTube. Dad, I love my channel so much. You can make so much more money on YouTube than you think. From now on, I will give you all the money I make. Please don't ask me to shut down my channel. My parents kept staring at me blankly. My mom said, oh my God, Tammy, is it possible to make this much money on YouTube? And turned to Ellie screaming, this is all because of you. You made us do it. Ellie began to cry. Now I was surprised. What's going on? What did Ellie make you do? I asked. My dad said, Tammy, we did something horrible. When Ellie told us you still had your channel up, we got mad. We actually had no idea, but Ellie said we could delete the channel if we wanted to. Your laptop was turned on and, Tammy, honey, we deleted your YouTube channel. My ears were ringing. This can't be real. It must be a nightmare, I mumbled. But when Ellie came and hugged me, I realized it wasn't. She was sobbing hysterically. I'm so sorry. I showed my parents how to delete the channel. I was the one who made them do it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My parents were looking at me with sadness in their eyes. Here I was thinking this would be the best day of my life because I was giving my family a new home as a present. But it ended up turning into the worst day of my life. That was two and a half months ago. Since then, we've moved into our new home but I still haven't recovered. My parents and Ellie are very sad. They keep apologizing to me. They want me to start a new YouTube channel, but I haven't even played Roblox since then. I don't think I can do videos when I'm so depressed. It was my 15th birthday. My mom sat me down and said, honey, you're old enough to know about this. We need to tell you something important. Our family has a big secret and it's time you found out. Ruby, you are not supposed to tell anyone about this family secret of ours. It is really important, honey. Promise? My dad asked. I nodded. I was so curious. I held my breath and waited. Mom said, honey, we're a family of superheroes. We have superpowers. Normally, I would laugh, but my parents looked so serious that there was no way this was a joke. With a bewildered expression on my face, I first looked at my dad, then at my mom. Like in that Incredibles movie? I asked. My dad smiled. 
Not exactly, but yes, our family is somewhat similar to the family in that movie, he said. How are we different? I asked. My mom replied, we don't use our superpowers to fight evil, and we don't work undercover for the government. Your dad is a real vet, and I'm a real kindergarten teacher. This was the weirdest thing I could ever hear in my life. Suddenly, I had a million questions. Oh, what are your superpowers? <gasps> Did you come from outer space? Are we not human? Well, why don't I have a superpower? My parents <laughs> laughed. My dad said, Ruby, it's normal to have a lot of questions, but please don't ask them all at once. Then my mom started answering them for me one by one. Did we come from outer space? No, we're from here. Are we not human? We are, but we are a different human species. <gasps> Our species is called diversum. We can't marry from outside our own species. This is how we've managed to hide our secret for centuries. Every person from the diversum species has a superpower. We can't choose what it is, but we get it on our own between the ages 15 and 16. This is why you don't have a superpower yet, but your time has come now. This year, your superpower will be revealed. <laughs> I'm so curious to know what it's going to be. My mom hesitated for a second and looked at my dad. So, what are our superpowers? You're going to be surprised to see this. Your father will show his first. Dad looked at me. He smiled and suddenly turned into a basketball. Then he became a white cat. Next, he turned into a Christmas tree. And finally, he was my father again. I watched in awe as my dad transformed right before my eyes. He smiled. <laughs> Do you like it? We call this shape-shifting, he said. Dad, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. <gasps> I hope my superpower is just as cool, I said. Then I turned to my mom to ask her what hers was, but mom wasn't there. Mom? I called out to her. I heard her right next to me say, I'm here, honey. <gasps> oh my gosh, mom, is your superpower invisibility? My mom popped up right in front of me. Yes, honey. Remember how you were never able to find me in hide and seek when you were little? That was my secret, she said with a laugh. Suddenly excited, I asked, so what's my superpower going to be? Dad responded, many different superpowers are observed in our species. Super speed, animal control, super strength, flight, super intelligence. For example, my mom's superpower is time travel. Your grandma Sarah's superpower is mind control. We don't know what your superpower is, but one morning when you wake up, you will just know that you have a superpower. We don't know when, but it will definitely happen within the year. <laughs> That night, I couldn't fall asleep for a long time. First thing I did as I woke up in the morning was to check myself to see if I had any superpowers. But since I didn't feel any different, I didn't have it yet. Thankfully, I had 364 days ahead of me. Months passed. I was getting worried. I was checking myself every morning and felt disappointed when I realized I didn't have my superpower. As I walked into the kitchen for breakfast, my parents were staring at me. They could tell I was sad. Don't worry, honey, your superpower will manifest itself soon, they said, trying to make me feel better. My mom told me she got her superpower three months after her 15th birthday. One day, she said, good morning, to my grandmother. And my grandma Sarah screamed with glee. Honey, I can't see you. You got your superpower and it's invisibility. So then my mom nervously asked her, okay, great, but uh, how do I become visible again? My grandma responded, you should be able to control that yourself. I can't help you with that. So my mom walked around invisible for four days. Thankfully, she figured out how to control her superpower and became visible again. My dad's superpower was revealed seven months after he turned 15. He had a small dog then. One morning, the dog came to my dad's room to wake him up, but she started growling as soon as she saw my dad. Apparently, my dad was dreaming of his dog, and without knowing, he had transformed himself into her. The poor dog started barking uncontrollably when she saw another dog instead of her human sleeping in his bed. My dad woke up in a sweat. Shortly after, he figured out that he had gotten his superpower, and he could shapeshift from then on. It had been 364 days since my birthday. Unfortunately, I still hadn't gotten my superpower. The next day, I was going to turn 16. When I woke up in the morning, I found my parents were waiting at the foot of my bed. I sat up. I checked to see if my superpower was there, but I didn't feel anything. My superpower wasn't revealed on the last day either. I started crying. Concerned, my parents looked at each other. I don't understand. This is not normal, my dad mumbled. I agree. It's not normal. We need to consult our elders, she said, and video called her mom, Sarah. She asked, Mom, today's the last day before Ruby turns 16 and she still hasn't received her superpower. 
Why do you think that is? My grandmother was calm. Don't worry about it. What's the big deal? Don't be upset. What if Ruby doesn't have a superpower? It's not like having superpowers made a difference for us. I haven't used mine in months, she said. Meanwhile, behind her, my grandfather appeared. Honey, she's lying. Just last week, she manipulated me into buying a new TV, he said, laughing. We laughed at that as well. I told you earlier that Grandma Sarah's superpower is mind control. So she can get my grandfather to do anything she wants him to do. When my maternal grandmother was of no help, my dad called his own mother. Grandma Jessica said, This is very serious. We're coming over. My granddad's superpower is teleportation. That is instant travel. A few seconds later, my dad's parents were standing in front of us. I've never heard anything like this before. Are you sure you still don't have it, my dear? Grandma Jessica asked me. I'm sure, Grandma, I said, and started crying again. Oh, honey, don't you worry. We will figure this out, she said, hugging me. She turned to my mom. I can think of only one reason, but I can't tell you what that is yet. First, I need to go and see for myself. I'm afraid I might run into something unpleasant, she said. Alarmed, my mom asked, what do you mean? What are you scared to find out? Grandma Jessica shook her head. I'll tell you when I get back. I hope it's not what I'm thinking, she said. Then she started spinning around really fast and suddenly disappeared. We kept waiting anxiously. I'd mentioned that Grandma Jessica's superpower is time travel. It looked like she was going to travel through time to shed light on this issue. Three hours later, she was back. She sat by the bed and held her head between her hands. She looked devastated. Unfortunately, it is what I thought it was. I don't know how to break this to you, she said, turning to me. Ruby, my little Ruby, this is going to hurt, but you have a right to know this before anyone else, she said. Then she turned to my mom. I went to the day Ruby was born. Your mom, Sarah, did something horrible that day at the hospital. I can see she did it for you, but still, what she did is inexcusable, she said. I couldn't take it anymore. Grandma, you're scaring me. What did Grandma Sarah do? Why did you go to the hospital? I screamed. She sat right next to me. Your mom went into labor earlier than expected. She had six more weeks when she started getting contractions. Coincidentally, your grandma Sarah was with her that day. She took your mom to the hospital. We weren't there. That's why I traveled in time to that day. I wanted to see what happened at the hospital, she said. Grandma Jessica stopped. She swallowed hard. Tears started pouring down her face. Apparently, it was very difficult for her to tell us what she had seen. Please keep going, grandma. We need to find out, I said to her. She was having a hard time speaking. I traveled in time to go to the hospital. Your mother was unconscious when she was brought in. She was bleeding. They took her into surgery immediately. Shortly after, the surgeon came and said to Sarah, Unfortunately, we lost the baby. Your grandmother lost herself. She started yelling and screaming. She blamed the doctors, but the baby had already died inside the womb. The doctors could do nothing about it. Then Sarah found a horrible solution to this problem. With her mind control ability, she made the doctors and the nurses that were in the operating room forget about the whole thing. She sent one of the nurses to the nursery for the newborn. She brought one of the babies in, and that was you, Ruby. Sarah switched you with the baby that had passed. Then she went to the room where your real parents were. She took over their minds and made them believe their baby was gone. Your mom was still under anesthesia, so she had no idea about any of this. When she woke up, you were with her in the room. Your mom thought she went into labor and had you, but this is not the truth. Oh my, I saw everything. I saw everything Sarah did at the hospital. The room was completely still. Everyone was in shock. No way. Why would Grandma Sarah do something like that? This is horrible, I said, sobbing. My parents came closer and embraced me. They were crying too. It was what it was. There was nothing we could do about it. We cried for a long time. My mom said to me, you are our daughter. Nothing can ever change that. None of this is your fault. Two months have passed since that eventful day. Both my parents and I have come to accept the truth. My mom had a big fight with her own mom. They're still not speaking. Grandma Sarah calls me every day, but I don't pick up the phone. I don't trust her. I think she wants to get into my head and make me forget how angry I am with her, but she won't be able to do it. There are so many things about this that upset me. Just think about it. The people I've come to know as my parents and family are not my real family. My real parents, on the other hand, think that I'm dead. Even if I were to go and find them, I can't explain the truth to them. And finally, I waited a whole year to get my superpower. I was so stressed. I didn't get my superpower because I'm not the biological daughter of my parents. What would my superpower be if I really was of the diversum species? I still wonder about that. How about you? What superpower would you like to have? Please write in the comments. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. 
My name is Sadie. I'm 15 years old. Yes, 15. Obviously, I'm aware that I look like I'm 60, but I'm still a teenager. The reason I look old is because I have a very rare genetic disorder. We all have a gene that regulates our growth hormone. That's why most people age at more or less the same rate. But for some reason, my gene does not control my growth in the same way. As a result, my body grows four times faster than it's supposed to. When I was just a year old, I looked like I was four. And when I was five, people thought I was 20. At 11, I looked like a 40-year-old woman. And now that I'm 15, I already look like I'm 60. Because of this, I've had a very unusual life. How do you live when you look four times older than you really are? That's what I want to tell you about. When I was three years old, my mom took me to a shopping mall. Because of my condition, I already looked like I was 12. You know how there are people dressed up as different characters in shopping malls to entertain kids? I started following someone in a mouse costume because I really loved mice. My mom was so busy looking for clothes, she didn't realize I disappeared. I kept following this person all the way to the other side of the mall. When I looked around and didn't see my mom, I panicked. I began crying and screaming. Of course, that's normal for a three-year-old. To give you an idea of the mental development of a three-year-old, I knew apples were red and bananas were yellow, but I didn't know what color a carrot was. A security guard came up to me and asked me why I was crying. I want mom! I screamed. He said, okay, don't cry, we'll make an announcement and she'll come pick you up. What's your mother's name? I kept crying and said, I don't know, I just call her mom. He was shocked since he thought he was talking to a 12-year-old. Thankfully, I knew my own name. They were able to make an announcement saying, a girl named Sadie has been found, and my mom had to run in a panic and pick me up. I had a horrible childhood because of my condition. Imagine me as a five-year-old. I was holding my mom's hand walking down the street. I was playing with Barbies all the time. I talked like a five-year-old kid, but I looked like I was 20. Most people assumed I had some kind of intellectual disability. They thought I just acted like a five-year-old even though I was 20. When in fact, it was the opposite. I was a five-year-old kid who happened to look 20 years old. When I was born, everything was fine. I wasn't even a big baby. But after six months, I started growing incredibly fast. Doctors didn't understand what was going on. There was even one doctor who thought this rapid growth was due to my mother's milk. He tested my mom's milk in a lab, but couldn't find anything wrong with it. Eventually, they realized it was a genetic condition. That's how I was diagnosed. Because of the way I looked, I didn't have any friends growing up. All the other kids were scared of me, and they were right to be scared. They didn't invite me to their birthday parties. Once, when I was five, a new manager was transferred to my mom's office from another city. When she found out that my mom had a five-year-old daughter, she said, My daughter is turning five this weekend. We're throwing her a little birthday party. Since we just moved here, she doesn't have any friends yet. She would be so happy if your daughter came. My mom knew what was going to happen, but since it was her new manager who invited her, she didn't want to say no. <laughs> that Sunday, we went to their house for the birthday party. We rang the bell. My mom's manager opened the door. When she saw me, she was super confused. My mom was standing there with a 20-year-old holding a Barbie doll. All I could think about was the birthday cake. I screamed, is it a fruit cake or a chocolate cake? Can I blow out the candles too? The manager was stunned. She said, stuttering, I thought, I thought your daughter was five. My poor mom, all she could say was, Sadie is five, but she grows a little faster than other kids. I was so excited to be invited to a party for the first time that I ran around nonstop. Everyone was scared of me, but I wasn't old enough to realize that yet. There was a female clown at the party. I liked her a lot. I told her, I really need to pee. Can you take me to the bathroom? She was scared of me too. I'm sure if a 20-year-old had told you something like that, you'd be scared too. Maybe you saw the movie The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Brad Pitt plays the main character who also has a genetic disorder similar to mine. Except in his case, he is born old and gets younger with time. It's the exact opposite of my condition. Benjamin Button is the protagonist of the movie and he looks like a very old guy. But as time goes by, he gets younger. By the time he turns 80, he has become a baby. I wonder what I'll be like as I keep getting older. My doctors are also curious. I'm being examined regularly. 
Even though I look like I'm 60, my internal organs are like that of a normal 15-year-old. When I'm 30, I will look 120, but my organs will still be healthy. The oldest person ever lived to 122. When I'm 50, I will look like I'm 200. No one knows what a 200-year-old would look like. Thanks to me, everyone will find out. To be honest, this both scares me and excites me. I told you I had no friends when I was growing up. Thankfully, that's not the case anymore. My friends have accepted me <laughs> and the way I look. They call me Auntie Sadie. It doesn't bother me. I think it's funny. Everyone at school calls me that. Even some of the teachers. You might think that I'm bullied at school, but luckily I'm not. Of course, there is a group of bullies in my school, but they never do anything to me. The reason is simple. I look like their grandma, so they treat me like they treat their grandmas. Once I found out that they were harassing one of my friends, I got really angry. I went to talk to them. I said, why did you do that to my friend? The meanest kid in the group said, we didn't know he was your friend. I'm sorry, Auntie Sadie. Sometimes my friends take advantage of how I look. Normally, they wouldn't be able to go see R-rated movies unless they went with an adult. And their parents usually don't want to go with them. But if they go with me, problem solved. Not a single movie theater employee has ever been suspicious of me. We usually go to see horror movies. I don't particularly like them, but I tolerate them from my friends. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. Thanks so much. As you can see, I've made my peace with how I look. The biggest issue I have right now is my clothes. I dress like a normal 15-year-old girl. Sometimes people on the street give me weird looks. Of course they think I'm a 60-year-old woman dressed like a teenager. For some reason, this bothers people. Once a woman made fun of me saying, Puberty usually only lasts a few years, but I see yours has lasted for 50. <laughs> Not everyone is that mean. Some people find it adorable that I dress like this. I love roller skating. They love seeing an old lady in colorful clothing on roller skates. They stop me and say, you're awesome. I hope I will be as active as you are when I'm your age. What's your secret? I don't think someone who is 60 would have the same amount of energy I have, but I want to keep them dreaming, so I tell them, work out as much as you can and eat a vegetarian diet. Actually, there's one other issue that I'm a little hesitant to talk about, but since I already told you everything, I might as well open up about this as well. The truth is that I will never, ever have a boyfriend. Don't you agree? I look four times older than people my age, and I'm four times younger than people that look like me. I'll never find anyone who's my age in both ways. It's sad but true. I will never have a relationship. Some of you might be wondering, can you get treatment for this disorder? Unfortunately, no. Scientists only know which genes cause this issue and that's it. Maybe someday they will develop a treatment, but that's definitely not an option at the moment. When I was little, I used to tell myself, I will become a doctor and find a cure for my disease. But now I understand that this was a coping mechanism I created for myself. Because I was going through a very difficult time. I had to convince myself that one day I was going to get well and all my issues would magically disappear. But I'm all grown up now, and I know a miracle cure does not exist. So I realized that I needed another coping mechanism, and I found something way cooler. Now I say to myself, be proud of yourself, you're a miracle of nature. Yes, I'm a miracle of nature. You're looking at someone who's growing four times faster than other people. I'm 15, but I look 60. And when I'm 50, I will look like I'm 200. Don't you think that's a miracle? Thanks for listening to my story. Please subscribe to get notifications when new videos drop. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Bye!